In this quick video, I'm going to teach you the harmonic minor scale formula and then show you two really great ways you can practice it so that you can learn the scale all over the neck. How's it going guys? Hugh Richardson from OnlineBassGuitar.com here. Just a quick note, if you do enjoy this lesson and you like what you see, then please do consider subscribing. So the harmonic minor scale, this is often referred to as a natural minor scale with a raised seventh. So before we can really understand how to build this harmonic minor scale formula or tonal structure as it's called, we've got to understand what a natural minor with a raised seventh actually is. So get your bass out if you want to follow along. And if we start by playing through a B natural minor scale uh, so I'm going to do that from the seventh fret of the E string here we just play through the scale like normal and then when we get to the seventh degree so that A note one two three four five six seven to sharpen it it just means we need to raise it by a semitone anytime in music we talk about sharpening a note it means to raise it from its original position up one semitone so this time when we get through to that seventh degree that A Instead of going here to the A natural, we move it up a semitone to A sharp and play that instead. So the scale sounds like this. So now we've got to work out what this new scale formula is. And the way that we do that is by measuring the intervals between each note. So the interval between note one and two, and then two and three, three and four, four and five, five and six, and so on. So if we start off with B to C sharp, those are our first two notes. B to C sharp, we can see here, we go from the B up two frets to the C sharp. So up two frets is like going up two semitones or a whole tone. So we know the first step in our scale formula is a whole tone, root, upper tone. The next note, is C sharp to D. Now that just up one fret is a semitone. And then next is D to E, so from the minor third to the fourth, that's a tone. E to F sharp, another tone. And then F sharp to G is a semitone. Now, instead of going G to A natural, like we had in our natural minor scale, we want to go G to A sharp. So that's to our raised seventh. So this time, G to A sharp, that's actually a minor third. And then from our A sharp to B is a semitone again. Now, I've got a couple of really great ways I want you to practice this because it's all well and good us knowing the formula, but if we can't apply it to the neck and if we can't learn this scale all across the neck in different positions, then we're really not learning the scale properly. We're not doing as much work as we should do. So we're gonna learn this scale both vertically and horizontally. We're gonna start off with horizontal first, and what I mean by that is just starting here, going up one string, just playing the scale all the way up one string so we can learn all those notes on one string. We start on B, we go up a tone, up a semitone, up another tone, up a tone again, semitone, minor third, and then a semitone. And then you want to make sure you can do the whole thing in reverse going back down as well. So we'd start on our B at the top, our octave, go down a semitone, down a minor third, down a semitone, down a tone, down a tone, down a semitone, and then down a tone again to finish. This means right away we're busting out of knowing scales just in one position. Usually when we know a scale, we learn it there, or we learn it here, and that's it. And we don't really explore the rest of the neck, but by starting our scales horizontally all across one string, look how much more of the neck I'm covering. And you can apply this to absolutely any harmonic minor scale, as long as you, or any scale in fact, as long as you know the, the formula or the tonal structure, you can apply it to any scale, start from any single fret or any note on the neck, and it's always gonna work. So we know about learning scales horizontally, but what about vertically? Now, this doesn't just mean playing the scale in position like this. Yes, vertically we are talking about going in this direction across the neck, but there are a hell of a lot more ways to learn this scale and to play it than just in this one position here. So how I want you to practice this scale is by playing in three different positions that I like to call in front of the root, on top of the root, and behind the root. I've talked about this a little bit on this channel before, but basically what this refers to 
are the different scale shapes that come from shifting some of these notes into different positions. If we start with playing a scale behind the root, what this refers to is we play our root note and we want to play as many, if not all of the other notes of the scale behind it this way. So that would force me into playing this scale shape. So very different scale shape. I cover a very different portion of the neck. That's what we would call behind the root. On top of the root means trying to have notes on either side of the root note in your scale position. Now for the harmonic minor, I will warn you, this does throw up a really tricky shape. So the scale shape would be this. We start on the B, play the C sharp in front, but then go back to the D to play that behind. E on top, F sharp in front, the G behind, and then A sharp and B, they're like that in front. So you can see I'm stretching a lot with that. I mean, be careful if you've got smaller hands or you get hand cramps or pain or anything. I'd recommend sort of only practicing this shape for a little bit and taking plenty of rest, taking plenty of breaks. If you feel your hand is in pain, definitely stop. Always a good idea. So we have one more scale shape and then I'm going to give you a really cool exercise on how to combine these vertical and horizontal shapes all together. The in front of the root scale shape, I'm sure you will know about this. This is just about how can we get all of our notes in front of the root and what this gives us is our, you know, our kind of classic harmonic minor shape. If you've ever played it or you look through scale diagrams on the internet or bass magazines, this is usually the shape that you will see. So you go root, C sharp, D, so one, three, four with your fingers, E, F sharp, G, again one, three, four, and then A sharp and B, there like that with your second and third. Sometimes people will use the first finger for the A sharp, but completely up to you, depends what you feel comfortable with. Now, combining this all together, this is the kind of fun and cool part, this is where it all comes together. An exercise I like to give my students is basically just to run the scale up and down in octaves, but to shift the way that they go up or down it each time. So for example, if I was to ascend with my behind the root shape, when I get up to here, I'd have to descend with something other than behind the root. So I might go, uh, I might go in front of the root. Now here, when I go back here, I need to buy some space and need to get somewhere different. So I might ascend vertically just all up one string. And you can just keep on going and going and going like this. So it's quite a cool exercise because depending on which shape you start with or where you start or how you go about it, you don't always end up moving around the neck in the same way. This concept of playing scales in front, behind and on top of the root is a great way to get around the neck and it's something you can apply to a load of different scales. So if you wanna see how this could be applied to a major scale, check out this video I've done up here. If you do want any of the scale diagrams that I've been flashing up on screen, I'll put them together in a PDF which you can download. There's a link below in the description. Other than that, if you have enjoyed this lesson, then please consider leaving your thumbs up and subscribing down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Take care.